So are you tired of winning yet? Or are you tired of seeing America humiliated? People voted for Donald Trump for many reasons, both positive and negative. The negative reasons to vote for Donald Trump include hatred of Hillary Clinton, hatred of Bill Clinton, hatred of Barack Obama, hatred of Michelle Obama, hatred of Democrats generally. White supremacists like David Duke voted for Donald Trump because they heard enough from him to believe that he shares their hatreds. The positive reasons for voting for Donald Trump were essentially economic. The belief that Donald Trump would improve the economy. And central to that belief is Donald Trump's claim that he is a great negotiator, the world's greatest negotiator, and that he would negotiate new international trade deals with foreign countries that would give the United States huge new advantages over every other country that it trades with. We would have a newly powerful American economy created by the great negotiator, beating every other negotiator in the world. And according to Donald Trump, getting a better deal than all previous American negotiators would be easy. Everybody wants me to negotiate. That's what I'm known as, as a negotiator. We need great people negotiating our deals for us. We have the greatest negotiators and the greatest business people in the world, and we use political hacks to negotiate our deals. Not anymore, we're not. Not anymore. And today we saw the complete humiliation of Donald Trump, the negotiator, by the very first foreign leader he wants to negotiate with, the president of Mexico. Yesterday, President Enrique Peña Nieto, the 57th president of Mexico, said that he was considering not attending next week's meeting in Washington with President Trump as long as President Trump was insisting that Mexico pay for the Trump wall. Now, that was shocking enough for any exchange between the presidents of Mexico and the United States prior to inauguration day 2017 but then the most relentlessly shocking person ever to live in the white house used twitter this morning not to go around the news media which is his claim of why he needs to use twitter no 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 this morning the president of the united states used twitter to go around his own diplomatic channels and he said this if mexico is unwilling to pay for the badly needed wall then it would be better to cancel the upcoming meeting now the president of the united states used to be the most powerful head of state in the world and if the president of the united states privately through diplomatic channels threatened to cancel a meeting with another head of state simply based on the agenda for discussion then the other head of state would almost certainly agree to at least discuss the item that the president of the united states wants to discuss it wouldn't mean the foreign president would have to agree to it, just discuss it. A couple of hours after the Trump tweet this morning, the president of Mexico tweeted this. This morning we have informed the White House that I will not attend the meeting scheduled for next Tuesday with the president of the United States. So the greatest negotiator in the world lost in his negotiation with the president of Mexico before even having their first meeting. That is the single worst negotiation outcome any president of the United States has ever had with any foreign leader willing to talk to the president of the United States. And notice that the president of Mexico, in protocol terms certainly, insulted the president of the United States by making the announcement publicly that it was his personal decision alone to cancel the meeting with the president of the United States. If it had been a mutual decision, there would have been a joint statement issued not on Twitter, but in standard diplomatic press release style. So, in the negotiations to force Mexico to pay for the wall, so far it is President Peña Nieto one, President Trump zero. Now let's go back for just a moment to that stunningly inappropriate anti-diplomatic tweet that Donald Trump set out this morning. He said if Mexico is unwilling to pay for the badly needed wall, then it would be better to cancel the upcoming meeting. So it turns out that the great negotiator has absolutely no idea what to say if the other side simply says no. The great negotiator is so lost if the other side says no that he has no idea. No idea what to say next. Now great negotiators don't cancel negotiation meetings. They make negotiation meetings happen and they get results that no one else can get in negotiation meetings because they are great negotiators. And in Donald Trump's first negotiation with the president of a foreign country, he was completely shut down by that president. 
How good of a negotiator are you if you can't even get the other side to show up at the negotiation? This is an international humiliation of the first order for the President of the United States. He said Mexico would pay for the wall, and he alone could get Mexico to pay for the wall. So if Mexico paying for the wall was key to your vote for Donald Trump, you voted for a lie. We told you this in this hour time and time again. Mexico would never pay for the wall. Mexico told you Mexico would never pay for the wall. The current and past presidents of Mexico told you they would never pay for the wall. And they were telling you the truth. And so, reeling now in the permanent state of shock that Team Trump seems to be in every day in the White House, Press Secretary Sean Spicer said, we'll get Mexico to pay for a wall by putting a 20% tax on goods imported to the United States from Mexico. I guess they don't want to use the word tariff because if they did, that might be just a little bit clearer to you that you, the American consumer, will be paying that tariff, not Mexico. When you tax Mexican goods sold in the United States, you are taxing them when they're sold in the United States to people in the United States. That's who's buying Mexican goods in the United States, and that's who's paying that tax. That is not Mexico paying for the wall. That is the taxpayers of the United States paying for the wall. The people who Donald Trump promised would never have to pay for the wall. And as soon as Sean Spicer said that, I sent out a tweet saying that that was an admission that Mexico won't pay a penny for the wall. And then, with the White House being bombarded with tweets like that and questions like that about forcing Americans to pay for the wall with a 20% tax on Mexican goods, someone at the White House suddenly realized how profoundly stupid that is, as well as profoundly dangerous, since it would be the first shot fired in a trade war that could go worldwide, a shot that could reverberate around the world and affect many other countries. And very quickly, a start a North American recession, followed by a worldwide recession. And so the White House backed off the idea. NBC's Peter Alexander caught up with Donald Trump in the White House tonight for a moment, and he had this exchange with him. Peter Alexander said, since there was confusion about the 20%, do you just want to clarify? Donald Trump said, what 20% is that? Peter Alexander, the 20% about Mexican imports tax, Donald Trump. We're going to tax people coming in. Look, we cannot lose our companies to Mexico or any other place and then have them make the product and just send it across our border free. We're going to put a substantial tax on those countries, okay? And that's why, by the way, they're all coming back, okay? Without that, they don't come back so easily. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. None of this is going to happen. None of it. Congress is not going to legislate a 20% tariff on Mexico. This is simply a president who has no idea how to negotiate with another country, making tantrum-like noises that have no meaning. Our best hope tonight for the world's understanding of this new version of the American presidency is that heads of state and stock markets around the world grant this president no credibility in moments like this. We can only hope that the world gets used to not believing Donald Trump, not believing that he will do the horribly destructive things that he says he will do. We need the world to get used to Donald Trump reversing himself on some of his craziest and cruelest ideas. He has said many times that the dreamers have to go, the kids who were brought into this country without documentation when they were toddlers, some of them infants, before they could walk, grew up here, went to our public schools, went to college, considered themselves American. Donald Trump has said that they all must be deported. They must leave the country. And then last night, he said this. The children who were brought here, as you know, by their parents, should they be worried uh, that they could be deported? And is there anything you can say to assure them right now that they'll be allowed to stay. They shouldn't be very worried. They are here illegally. They shouldn't be very worried. I do have a big heart. We're going to take care of everybody. They shouldn't be very worried. After two years of terrorizing those kids and their families, Donald Trump says they shouldn't be very worried.
I doubt the words of Donald Trump have made a single dreamer here in the United States any less worried tonight than last night. But President Enrique Peña Nieto is absolutely not worried about Mexico paying for that wall. And there is nothing that the self-proclaimed greatest negotiator in the world can do or say to force or coax or negotiate the president of Mexico into paying for that wall. And so tonight the world has seen the president of Mexico stand up to the president of the United States and just say no. An absolute no. And they saw that Donald Trump's reply to that was nothing. The great negotiator couldn't think of a single word to say back to the president of Mexico's defiant no. The whole world was watching. The whole world learned something about the great negotiator today. Tonight, NBC News has learned from a Trump administration source that Donald Trump will speak with Russian President Vladimir Putin by phone this weekend. And so, in the new Trump world order, the president of our peaceful ally across our southern border is regarded more like an enemy by the president of the United States than the president of Russia. Vladimir Putin is a crude and cruel dictator who is not very smart, as modern statesmen go, but is smarter than Donald Trump in every way that matters for a president. And we have every reason to fear what might happen in that phone call because Vladimir Putin is a much, much better negotiator than Donald Trump. But then, who isn't?